it's another chit chat video um let me tell y'all something i really got some weird ass let me watch my language i got some weird napoleon type complex going on <sighs> y'all rarely see me standing next to other people in my videos so you know it's just me or jb in my video so i'm the only person you have there's no other markers here for me to uh, to compare to so i have always viewed myself as a average size person i'm not i am petite i'm five three maybe five two but i'm five three i'm about 25 25 pounds overweight y'all i got my goal weight is 145 i'm almost there i'm almost there i've been taking my time loose work. but let me hear me out this is why i'm rambling about me you see this yeah ignore this stuff you see this shirt? This is JB's shirt. So, am I? <laughs> so, we're getting to the point to where I'm mistaking my clothes for JB's clothes and putting it on and thinking that it's my stuff and it's not. So, that's just to give me an idea. Yeah, that I'm not like a really big person. I'm, I'm mini. And I'm, the funny thing is, that I never shop in petite because I'm like, this stuff is too little for me. Y'all yeah, know how we do this. It's a chit chat video. My hair, when I tell you that it has been busy, I knew that May would be busy. Can y'all believe that we're already in May? This is crazy. We're already in May. I knew it would be busy. It's a busy month. There's a lot going on at JB School. And those of you who don't know, I'm a very involved parent, right? In this chit chat video, we're going to be detangling my hair. It has been literally a month since I've washed my hair. It's been about two months since I've detangled my hair. So I'm really am going to have to take the time to really detangle my hair. Um, I'm serving Powerpuff Girl. Let me take off this watch. Look at this cute little band, y'all, I bought. See how it has little jewels? That's pretty, huh? So y'all, personal life. Like I said, a lot going on. It's Mother Day. It's Teacher Appreciation Week. Um, they make it a really big deal at my school, at my at JB school, excuse me. And it should be a, a big deal because child teaching these kids is no joke. And there is literally, there are so many teachers that are quitting you guys and they are not going back into the education. Okay, not only are they they educators, they have to be um, therapists sometimes, they have to be motivators, they have to be parents. Um, it, it's just a lot. So yeah, much oblige, much oblige to the teachers out there. So child, they do it big. Like I said, they had a taco bar yesterday for them. I'm gonna be making a lemon pound cake and dropping it off on Friday. Um, Y'all look at this knot. I'm gonna have to really take my time to get that out. But they have like a theme and they have, you know, something every day. You don't have to, as parents, we don't have to do every day, you know, participate, but I do. Could you best believe I, I appreciate everything that the teachers do at his school. So, that's going on, and what else, what else? I got some notes here. Oh, JB took a swim assessment yesterday, and um, he needs to really work on some stuff. So, you know, the coach was like, has he had swim lessons? I'm like, wow, yes, he has. So, y'all, swim lessons is the type of thing to where once they take it, they got to continue it um, because JB stopped before they really started working with stroke development. And so she said that's something he needs to focus on. Um, so she recommended a particular schedule, excuse me, lesson for that. And then once he gets good with that, then he could join the swim team. Something I told JB though, because we had one of those days today to where he was late getting out. Of, he was up, but he was still laying in bed for a good 20 minutes. Late getting out the actual, not necessarily like getting out the house, but dragging, doing stuff. And I had to explain to him, you know, 
his school next year is gonna be in Rockwall, which is a good, even though Rockwall is 15 minutes away, it's gonna take us 30 minutes to get down there, okay? And so next year, he won't be able to just sit in bed, play Pokemon, look at Minecraft or whatever. I said, that's a luxury. Next year, when you get up, you get up, relax for about five, 10 minutes, and you have to immediately get ready. None of this, can we stop by Dunkin' Donuts on the way? No, you have enough time to get up to eat breakfast and get out the door. Like, this is ridiculous. So, really struggling with that. And I know a lot of parents do struggle with that, but I told them at this school, they actually, they do detention. You get in trouble if you're late to school. So you gotta make sure that you are up and on time. Um, what, what's the point, girl? So I told them, I said, you know, with that being said, it's gonna be very difficult for you to continue to do swim lessons during school if you're having trouble getting out of school on time. And then you have homework and you have this and you have that. And he's like, oh, that's going to be too much. I said, but that's my whole point. It's too much for you without adding the swim. Husband, he, I, I always try to tell him that, you know, one of the things of being a parent, it's just, it's the reminder and being consistent. He's like, well, that's why, you know, we should have started early with stuff. I said, it has nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with, with that. We go back and forth with that. I told her, I said, well, I'm not the only parent struggling. Oh, yeah, look at how long that is. I said, well, I'm not, I know I'm not the only parent struggling with the child to get out. Because I know, notice, you know, every now and then when I go to school, there's several kids showing up late. I would say a good 10, 15 other students. This is a small school. It's only 200 kids. You know, about 10, 15 other kids showing up late. Um, What else, what else, what else? You guys, this hair... This hair, this hair. This uh, upcoming wash day, I'm going to blow it out and I'm going to trim my ends, keep my ends trim. So I think that I'm going to have to be a blowout natural. What does that mean, Vivian? That means that uh, I'm gonna be walking around looking like Shaka Khan for, you know, 10 months out of... <laughs> that means that with me, it is, and I think with a lot of women, it's response better, the styles are better, the tangles are not as much if my hair is in a stretched out state, preferably blowout, of course. Um, I've been doing it without announcing it to you guys ever since I moved back to Texas. And I don't know what it is because I really didn't have to use heat that much in Phoenix. I, I know what it is. It's the humidity and everything too. Honestly, it is. So I'm going to be sticking to blowing out my hair once a month. Focusing on my roots when blowing it out. And um, yeah, keeping it in that stretched out state because baby, my hair is, is is not doing what it's supposed to be doing. Definitely need to keep up with my ends. And um, like I said, this wash day, I'm gonna be trimming my ends. Gonna have to. Talk to my Aunt Sherry, I said, I, I, my hair is stalling. She's like, are you clipping your ends, baby? That's the first thing she said. I was like, I didn't ask you that. I, I didn't, I, we're not talking about ends. <laughs> I'm so bad about that, y'all. I really, I think a lot of us are. But yeah, I'm blowing up my hair. And there's several natural YouTubers that keep their hair in a stretched out state. I think Avon Douglas, to a certain um, point, you know, homegirl from Louisiana with the huge afro. I think she keeps her hair in a stretched out state. Um, Leo Body, do y'all remember Leo Body? She's on Instagram, by the way. Um, she used to keep her hair stretched out. Um, what is her name? She has like, seriously... Her hair is to her kneecaps. I'm not kidding. Indigenous strands. She keeps her hair stretched out. And actually my girl, Linda, she's seeing now she's gonna start, you know, keeping her her hair stretched out with heat. It depends on how, you know, some people can do without heat and some people don't, but I need heat. Um, I don't use a comb, I use a tension method. When I have a video, I can put down below on how I use the tension method to blow out my hair. And again, I focus on the roots, not the ends as too much, because that's the newest part of your hair. So I try to, you know, be mindful of that. 
So yeah, that's what we're gonna have to do for now on because I don't want to be back in this state right here to where it's, yeah, this is not cute. Okay, so what I'm watching on YouTube. So, child, what does it say? I had unsubscribed from Peach. Y'all know who Peach is. The one that has um, the kids married to Wood. Why am I still getting recommendations for her stuff? And so then my sister was like, girl, did you see Peach latest video? I said, no, I didn't see that. And so she was telling me how I guess Peach got into a fight with a hairstylist and then came on cam with like her eye black and bloody. And I, like, y'all, I kind of started cracking up at that because it's like she stays in drama. There was another video that she showed me or what she told me about where she's opening up like reviewing packages at the beach. Y'all, absolutely a mess, a mess, a mess. So I guess she had, now this is what I don't agree with. She has had somebody calling CPS on her. Um, it could more than likely be one of her subscribers. It, it could. And so she was recording this one time where the CPS, I don't know what you call it, the call them, excuse me, the agent showed up at the door and was basically like, if you don't allow me to see the kids, I'm going to call the cops and we're going to put out an Amber Alert. And I'm like, what? They can do that? Like, if you don't allow them to see the kids, now your children are considered kidnapped and an Amber Alert will go out? And so Peach was like, no. And I guess the lady walked off to go call her supervisor. Peach was still waiting on her to come back and she didn't, she just drove off. Wow. Now in that instance, honestly, and I don't know if she, like again, cause, cause I don't watch her videos like that. I would stop showing my children online it, once it gets to that point, you know what I mean? And I didn't realize my sister had to tell me because again, y'all, I, I don't watch this girl, and I stop. I mean, I haven't watched her in forever. My sister had to tell me that um, all of those kids are by Wood. I had no idea that all of those kids are by him. I thought they were by, which is you know a good thing um, that it's the same father. Are they the same father? That's what she said. Um, but my thing is that she had all those kids back to back by him and. I don't think they were married for so long. Nothing wrong with that because not everybody, you know, wants to get married. But still. Y'all got to take my time. Does my hair look thin? Y'all, it's in my head. Um. So anyway, watching Peach, random stuff. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Okay, so girl, I was watching Carlos King did a video. Y'all have got to be careful about buying stuff online from people who you don't know the products or whatever. Um, I get on TikTok every now and then looking at their stuff, but I'm never. I was like, oh, let me get that. Absolutely not. I mean, if it would, it would be something that I could wear, meaning like jewelry or, you know, a household stuff. But even then. I've never bought anything through TikTok. I've never bought anything through Timo like that. I've never bought any makeup or anything from those places. I would be way too scared. So there's this one young woman who apparently bought some soap through a vendor on TikTok. She ended up having burns on her face, y'all, from using a soap that has acid. Now, I use acid on my face. So this, I use hyaluronic acid. I use lactic acid. I use a couple of things that have acid. I don't do it every day. Uh, and I don't do it all the time. And it's a very small amount of acid. But this particular bar soap, I'm pretty sure it had a lot more acid. And so she showed her, you know, she at first she was doing a video like this. And when she removed her hands, it looked like she almost had, what is that skin disorder? Vitiligo, vitiligo, the one that Michael Jackson had. It looked like she had that. I was like, oh my gosh. And apparently, I don't think that's something that's going to like be fixed overnight. It's going to take a while for her skin tone to come back in. Oh my gosh. 
Then there was, no, no, I'm sorry, the TikTok incident was recent. There was another video of a young woman who went to a esthetician, am I saying that right? She got a certain facial done that's called a BBL. I'm like, y'all getting y'all freaking, y'all getting like big butts on your face. What the hell does that mean? BBL facial stands for Brazilian Band Light Facial. A Brazilian Band Light Facial. Y'all, she showed her skin. She had blotches, 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 blotches. I was like, oh my gosh like it was it, it was burns again like second degree burns all over her face and come to find out a dermatologist came on and said that there are certain type of facials that people with melanated skin are not supposed to do what i didn't know that because i don't do facials and i had never went to a, a esthetician or anything like that and so this one guy said you know yeah there are certain facials that are designed for people that have little to no, you know, everyone has melanin, but not for melanated people. And so this one young lady didn't know this. And what type of esthetician doesn't know that? Who would recommend that? Like, that makes no sense to me. So gotta do your research before doing that type of stuff. Cause that's really scary to have to, and I guess it was peeling too. Oh my gosh. It was peeling y'all. All right, y'all, what I'm watching on YouTube, Netflix, Hulu, now I got Amazon Prime. Child, um, I canceled Peacock because, baby, I was paying $6.99 a month, and I'm like, ain't nobody watching no Peacock, so <laughs> got rid of that, and I got Amazon Prime for, like, a month. I canceled that already. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so let's talk about it, y'all. First of all, let's talk about some of the stuff that I really just watch a little bit and that's it. So, I rewatch Indecent Proposal. Again, one of those type of movies to where it hits differently now that you're grown and you've been doing some places. You know, you've done, some, done a lot. So, hear me out, y'all. I don't have that daddy issues. I don't. I just, a part of me has always preferred older men. I mean, my husband is 13 years my senior. So... I first saw it, I wasn't in, a, it came out when I was a teen, I think, but I think I saw it in my 20s. And the first time I saw it, I was like, oh, Robert Redford. And I knew exactly who he was because I was really into old movies. I've been into adult movies, right? Not like that, like older, old movies. Girl, adult movies, you nasty ass. I've been into older movies and older men. I've seen it now with my geriatric millennial eyes. And Robert Redford look a hot ass mess. Now hear me out. Very handsome. Okay. He is very handsome still in the movie. But I guess now with these eyes, I'm like, what the hell was I thinking? He's very, very wrinkly. Maybe I got high. Maybe I saw it in high def definition. Maybe, maybe that made the difference. But I'm like, yeah, I don't remember him being this wrinkly. Um Demi Moore's haircut in that damn movie. Baby, let me tell you something. I was like, that bob is sleek for the gods, honey. That bob was so, and I've had a bob, you guys. I had a bob actually <clears throat> twice in my life, but I had an asymmetrical bob. Baby, that thing was, when I tell you my, I, it was went to here. My bob went to, to my shoulder all the way up around and it went to here. It was cute. I may give me a, let me just get a wig. But watch Indecent Proposal. Everything was wrong, came out. I was like, this is movie is just a mess. Um, Knock at the Cabin, another weird ass M. Not Shyamalan, la 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 movie. It was very, predict very predictable, excuse me. I wasn't surprised. I was like, okay. Of course, M. M. Night Shyamalan did his cameo that he always got. Y'all, he got that from Alpha Hitchcock and Hitchcock, excuse me. And Stephen King would do that too, by the way. So yeah, saw that. Huh, okay. I'm back to watching while I still have a Goliath. And let's talk about it, girl. Hold on. Also started to watch Fallout. Let me tell you something. Fallout 
is, is, is based off of the game, by the way. I was like, okay, it's going to be a little bitty white man walking around with blonde hair. Okay, no. Spoiler. If you don't want to know, I'm going to give you a spoiler. The first episode was like the Red Wedding, but picture the Red Wedding and everyone has machetes. Well, I tell you, I had to pause and be like, oh my gosh, like, this is, this is, over simulation everywhere. I was like, oh, I'm gonna need a drink. This is this is a bit much, but very, very good. Very good. I and I'm just on um episode three, and I'm like, I need a breather. It's one of those to where I, I gotta pace myself because it's it's a bit much. It is. Y'all let me put this up and go on this way. Fallout is on Amazon Prime. All right, y'all them season two let me just go ahead and tell you i did not finish season one <sighs> why vivian i'm not a real big fan of trauma porn i'm really not um and i had already got well they were it was spoilers because people were really talking about them season one set in the 1950s 50s early 60s and I knew I wouldn't be able to do it. So I watched like the first two or three episodes and that was it. I, I couldn't go anymore. Um, child, it, it had a very, and, and let me just say this too. If there's any type of characters that are really, really creepy, like what was that one that I literally had to stop watching? Um, it had two twin, twin demons tap dancing. I was like, Oh, so them season two has one thing I love about season two. And I'm not going to give any, any, I'm not going to give much away. Okay. I really not. Cause I want y'all to watch it with me. Season two has the same chocolate sister from season one. I think she's Nigerian y'all. Yeah, she is Nigerian. Her name is Deborah Agua. Agar, Agarino, Agarino, I know I'm not saying her name properly. She's actually British Nigerian, okay? She is absolutely stunning. She was beautiful in season one. Baby, in season two, she got these long braids. She is stunning. She's very, very beautiful. So it starts her and our boy, Luke James. I'm like, oh, Luke James gonna be singing and stuff? Girl, no, mm -mm. No, Luke James plays a very special young man trying to be an actor okay so the whole season is surrounding is is the 90s which i love baby because the jams are there i mean i grew up in the 90s but it's also surrounding the rodney king incident was it which again is kind of like trauma porn but it's not you know what i mean it's not fully in depth in it this woman plays uh, she's a cop, excuse me. Her character is a cop. Y'all, why do y'all remind me? And who's also in it is my girl, Pam Greer. You like, guys, I love to see Pam Greer acting. My favorite, one of my favorite movies is Jackie Brown. Y'all know we the same age as Jackie Brown was? Jackie Brown was like 42, 43 in the movie. And even though I'm 43, I'm that, you know, I look like that. I look just like, I look just like Pam Greer and Jackie Brown. Okay, so, so Pam Greer is this girl's mother, right? So it's all surrounding how, I'm going to say this, she is a detective, okay? Just, just not any cop, she's a detective. And there has been some murders going around, and she's trying to solve it and figure out who the killer is. In comes Luke James, crazy ass. <laughs> yeah, Luke James... And the thing that's really interesting, the when people play these parts, they have to get into a certain type of character to do that, okay? Uh, almost like how Joaquin Phoenix got into the character for the Joker, and even the young man who passed away before him. They really have to get into a character, get into character to play this type of part. So I'm wondering... What did he have to go through in order to sink down that low um, into that type of character? Again, one of those type of series that I literally binge watched it in three days. Maybe I was not wasting any time. Very good. 
look um looks care to make me feel so uneasy cut because you weren't you didn't know what to expect. You had the same type of uneasiness like you had in Silence of the Lambs. That type of uneasiness in Swarm. Did I see Swarm, which is also on Amazon Prime? Again, that type of unsettling. I think it's a combination of how the movie was shot, the scenes in it. There's a lot of close-up back and way and so you don't know what's around the corner of the music you just don't know and then there's the cinematography your girl big words cinematography the lighting is dark the overall lighting of the the movie is dark excuse me the series is dark um so you just don't know what to expect but i i finished it it was good so yes again very similar to season one it had a couple of mystery mixed in with some supernatural and i love that i really do hope they keep up with it because you see how season one is i'm not gonna give, give it a much away i think there's an overlapping of the stories for them just in general and it's, it's awesome. I'm really excited to see where this goes. Now, y'all know we waiting on Bridgerton. Bridgerton is coming, okay? Bridgerton is coming. And Silo, if you guys haven't seen Silo season one, that's coming though in 2025. So girl, we're gonna have to wait for that. That's coming. Um. So yeah, you guys, that's it. It's a lot that's watching. Let me know, what are y'all What are y'all watching? You know, you watching anything good, girl? So y'all, that is it. I told y'all this would be kind of long. I need to continue to do something with this hair child. Uh, and thank y'all so much for watching. And thank you as always to all our new subscribers. Take care. Bye.